Now, would you believe it that between them, Australia's cats are responsible for the deaths of one million birds every day? Now, that was the key finding of a new research by the National Environmental Science Program. Now, they collated about 100 pre-existing studies and it's said to be the first nationwide evaluation of just how bad Australia's feral cat problem is. By its author's calculation, no fewer than 377 million birds meet a feathery fate with cats each year. Now, that's mainly from feral cat predation. Professor John Wynarski from Charles Darwin University is the lead researcher, and he told ABC News 24 how he arrived at this quite incredible figure. As you said, we've worked out the densities of feral cats across Australia and their total population size. We've collated information from a whole lot of studies of uh, diet of feral cats and we've got information from museum specimens, vets and su such like about the number of birds that are brought in that are killed by cats. Mm. You know, pe people spend quite a bit of time going through cat shits and cat, cat stomachs to actually figure out what they've eaten. It's a messy business but um, basically if you tally all those up then you can work out the total pe population of feral cats in Australia which is around about two to four million. Uh, you can work out that every feral cat eats about 130 birds per year um, and if you tally that up across Australia then the total population of birds killed by feral cats is around about 320 million and on top of that pet cats kill about 60 million. John Monarski who uh, led up that research to collate all that information. Now of course they say that inland Australia is the worst place for feral cat predation. That's our part of the world. Now, Atticus Fleming is from the Australian Wildlife Conservancy who managed New Haven Station northwest of Alice Springs. Atticus, very good morning to you. Uh, I hope you got no feral cats near you this morning. How are you? Oh, g'day, Stuart. How are you? I'm well. Hey, what do you make of those figures? They're quite astonishing, aren't they? Uh, well, they are astonishing, but I think I, I, we, you and I probably had a chat a few years ago and we were talking about the fact that cats are killing millions of native animals every night. Yeah. So these figures are really just backing up what you and I were talking about a few years ago. Yeah. And it's, interestingly, John's um, uh, stats there, that, that number is based on a relative, I, I would say relatively conservative estimate of two to four million feral cats in Australia. You would suggest there's more? Well, no. If you dig into that number, that's a number that John produced in a previous paper and the 95% confidence interval actually goes up to about 11 million. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, that, 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 what, do you, what that means is the two to four million is a very rough number and it yeah. could be a lot more. Uh, so, you know, I think what you also need to think about is the fact that this has been going on for years and years and years and years. So it's not just that they've killed 300 million in the last 12 months, it's that they've been doing this for a century. And that's the astounding thing. How do any bird populations, and I'm talking about across Australia, not just in inland Australia, survive that sort of onslaught? Because that must mean... Oh, I mean, obviously we know that cats are, th are threatening and, others, and other ferals are threatening sort of species, be both mammal, reptile and bird. But how does anything survive that? Uh, well, it's a good point because the impact on mammals is much greater. So... But uh, feral cats are really uh, ma almost mammal specialists. Yeah. So the birds are almost incidental to what they're doing to mammals. But they're they're uh, a non tray That's right. That's exactly right. And really the answer to your question is our animals are not surviving this. We have the worst mammal extinction rate in the world. And so many of our species have disappeared entirely from all or parts of their range or are in really low numbers. So... Another way of looking at it is to go back and read the accounts of early explorers. When they came through places like Central Australia, the bush was alive with animals. Yeah. And now it's not. So people probably forget what the baseline should be. The baseline isn't five years ago or ten years ago. The baseline... 130 years ago. That's right. And, and Central Australia was a dramatically different place. It was booming with animals. Well, I, I went to a talk from Ken Johnson a few weeks ago about the uh, explorations, I think, of Finlayson uh, in yep. the 20s or 30s out in the Rawlinson Ranges further west than, you know, west of Docker River and talking about the species. Now, we're talking about things like, you know, um, numbats, which exist in yep. central Australia. And anyone knows numbats, they're a beautiful banded small marsupial which lives on ants. But the only place they're found wild now is in that very small pocket in southwest WA, but they were all across inland Australia. That's right. There's now less than a thousand left in the world and I'm proud to say that 400 of those are on AWC land. 
so, uh, but it's a nice segue also to say that AWC, Australian Wildlife Conservancy, will be bringing the numbers back to Central Australia within the next uh, two to three years. That is very exciting. <laughs> I, mean, I know I, I sound like a fanboy, but that, I've seen them in the wild in the Wandu Forest yep. uh, many years ago, but that is very exciting and uh, there will be a great event when that happens. Just on the, the cat population, say, in inland Australia, and you do very intensive work at New Haven, do we have an idea of the cat densities in a place in an environment like New Haven, and which is representative of, of a part of inland Australia? Uh, so we know that cat densities and cat impacts in inland Australia are higher than in most of the rest of the country. Uh, in the Kimberley, we've done very detailed work. We're only really just starting that at, at New Haven. Yeah. So in the next couple of years, uh, we've got a team out there building our feral proof fence as we speak. So we're going to have a massive feral cat free area out of New Haven. Um, that'll ultimately be about 70,000 hectares. That's the biggest feral cat eradication on the planet at that point. Um, so the first stage is 10,000 hectares. Yeah. So as we're doing that, we're obviously removing the cats. That's going to give out, we'll do that in a sort of scientifically structured way. So we'll get some great data out of that, which will tell us a lot about the densities of feral cats in central Australia and, as a result, the impact. It's not just interesting, but it's crucial that uh, we, you do work like that. But what about outside of those reserves and outside of those exclusion areas? What are we doing or what can we do to reduce cat numbers where, right, I mean, you look about, you know, across inland Australia, if this is happening every night, just not, not just to birds, what are the other things which can be done to reduce the numbers? Because they, they're very hard to trap. Uh, I don't know how easy they are to poison. I mean, what are the methods to deal with, fa with feral cats? You're right. They're very hard to, to capture and kill. Um, and I should say just on that point that one of the reasons why the New Haven project is so exciting is the involvement of the Walfrey Rangers. Out at Nirrapee, yeah. Out at Nirrapee and, and Yendamu. Uh, they have exceptional cat tracking, cat hunting skills. Really unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and and they, they are one of the reasons why we will be able to remove what might be four to 500 cats across the area that we're, we're fencing. Um, so, so that's a critical. Your question, how do we get rid of them right across the landscape? Unfortunately, and, and John Winarski and his team make this point in their paper, there currently is no effective strategy. So we don't know the answer to that question. Uh, so exclusion is, is the best way of allowing native mammals, certainly, and to a degree, I suppose, nesting birds in that area to survive. Yeah, look, it, it highlights how critical it is to get very large feral predator-free areas, feral cat-free areas, they will, uh, we've done this in a few locations now, New Haven will be our biggest. Where we've done it elsewhere, we are seeing an increase in some of those ground-dwelling bird species. So these big fenced areas are great for birds as well. Um, but we need to also continue the work of trying to find that silver bullet for feral mm. cats. Yeah, when you, when you find it, tell everyone else. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hey, we, we had a reasonably wet start to the year in Alice Springs. I think it was a bit wetter to the northwest in the Tanami and probably at New Haven. Does the wet seasons lead to high... Well, it leads to more breeding amongst other animals. Does that lead to higher cat numbers as well? Yeah, it does, definitely. Good news. And, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. And look, you know, it's interesting because in Diamantina, which is, I know, not in the local area... but Oh, it's still inland right. Australia. That's right. I mean, it, in some years there, they have basically plagues of feral cats around Diamantina and Estrebla National Park. So the Queensland Park Service did a great job a few years ago. They shot, I think it was two or 3,000 feral cats in the space of 12 months. But that was a reflection on, on one park, about half the size of New Haven. That was a reflection of... A, a, that was a cat plague coming in to feed on bilbies and other endangered mammals. So, yes... Wet seasons do mean more feral cats. Yeah. Um, I suppose the key question as well, with uh, so much work going to the night parrot at the moment, it would be fair to say that the numbers of the night parrot would be influenced by and they would probably be predated upon by cats. Yeah, and again, I think, you know, John when asking his team in the paper make the point there's a subset of the, almost half of Australia's bird species are eaten by feral cats. Some are more vulnerable than others. Obviously, the ones 
player live on the ground, breed on the ground, feed on the ground. A night parrot was one that they pulled out and identified. Um, there's quail, thrush, there's things like the emu ran out at New Haven. Um, there's a suite of, of birds in the more vulnerable category. Yeah. Hey, Atticus, Fleming, uh, how soon before you have that first part of the exclosure finished? Uh, as I said, the fence is going up as we speak. I'm hoping that by about February that'll be done. We've then got the task, the Walpree Rangers primarily have the task of removing the cats. Uh, so we're working on early 2019 being the arrival of the first animals, the first animals to be reintroduced. So things like marla, uh, numbats, uh, western quolls, these animals will start coming in from June 2009, uh, from early 2019. A lot of people and are very excited by that. It'll be huge. Yeah, Atticus Fleming, thank you. Thanks a lot.